grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So welcome to our midweek communion here in St Thomas's on Bibbury Lane as we meet virtually together uh, for our communion. Um, I hope you are doing well and pray that you're doing well in these tough times. Uh, just to say that if you uh, need to have a catch up with me, do give me a call or get in contact with me by email. It would be lovely to catch up with you um, and then have a chat at some point. Uh, on, on a sad note, I have to say to you, um, unfortunately, uh, David Milligan, our friend, uh, passed away this last weekend. And so do keep Denise and the family in your prayers as they mourn the loss of David. Uh, more news on that shortly. But I guess, in reality, the funeral will no doubt have to be very small during these times of lockdown. But as I say, keep Denise and family in your prayers. Uh, I hope you get the news sheet. If you don't get the news sheet, most of the news is on there. If you don't get that by email, then give me a, an email to the office uh, or give me a phone call and we will add you to the sheet. Uh, lots of stuff going on on the news sheet, including the Lent course, which is coming up in the middle of February. So uh, look out for that this week uh, and get in touch with us if you, if you want to join the Lent course. I have also uh, have the good news of saying that I've got Emily with me today here in St Thomas's, Emily is exploring her vocation and what that might mean moving forward. So she's joined me today in St Thomas's and she'll do the reading and the prayers for us later on. And hopefully you'll get to meet Emily when we come back to our builders in the future. So it's good to have Emily with me today, although you can't see her quite yet. We'll see her later on. But of course what we're really here to do is to, is to have communion with our God. To take some time to be with him. Now I'm going to do that for us today. I will receive the wine and the bread for all of us today. But of course, you can have your spiritual communion at home where you are. So before we begin, let's take a moment just to be quiet and welcome God. Welcome his spirit to be with us right now. Us here in St. Thomas's, you in your living room. And as we begin, if you haven't got access to the communion words, you can download them from the website, uh, and we, but we will go through that with us. And we say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So we pause for a moment and reflect on our lives and come before a God who is keen to forgive us of our sin. A moment of silence to reflect. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all as we confess together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in the time where we may be missing the ability to sing our worship, we can fall back to the glory of it has been used for worship through the centuries. And so we use the Gloria as our worship now, as we say together, Glory to God in the hearts, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And before I pray the prayer of the week, the collect a moment of silence for you to say your own prayer of thanks. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the tenure of our lives make known your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now I'm going to invite Emily up to uh, say our, our first reading. This reading is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 8, verses 1 to 22. When Samuel became old, he made his son judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel, and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the leaders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, and be, to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plough his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make implements of war and equipments for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your field and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. 
He will take your male and female slaves, the best of your cattle and donkeys, and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flock, and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you on this day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may be like all the other nations, and that our king may go before us and fight our battles. When Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them into the ears of the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and set a king over them. Samuel said to the people of Israel, Each of you return home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Emily. And now we have the gospel written in the ninth chapter, starting at verse 14. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn? while he is with them. The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them and they will fast. No one sews a patch of untrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst, the new wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. And both are preserved. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. He said to her, she said to herself, If only I could touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and the people playing pipes, he said, go away, the girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread throughout all the region. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and asked them, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done for you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over the region. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, It is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And Father, as we come before you and we read your scriptures, would you guide our hearts and our minds? Might we be open to hearing your spirit? Amen. Did we have enough faith? Those were the words that went through my mind as a young Christian, an adult, but nevertheless a young Christian when we had been praying for a young boy to be healed, and he unfortunately died. My understanding of what faith meant at that point was very immature as a young Christian. And actually we see in today, I mean, there's so much that we could pull out of today's reading, but we see in today's reading the real idea of what faith means. By their faith they are healed, Jesus says a couple of times in our reading. You see, faith is not about how hard we try or how hard we pray. 
that faith is about who we turn to. In our first reading, Israel have turned away from God and turned towards human kings. A big mistake to be made. And then when Jesus comes and brings his kingdom, his idea is of a covenant partnership of faith. All throughout this whole book, actually, we see God want to partner with us in faith. That we turn to him in his miraculous powers, but also we get off of our seats and go and work in faith that people will be helped and healed and God's kingdom will come. I go into this in much more depth uh, on the sermon that's on the website from the weekend. If you want to uh, understand more of that, you can go and, and watch that. But I think the question for us to, to take away for our afternoon cup of coffee this afternoon is where do we place our faith? Do we follow Israel and turn to human understanding? Or do we turn to our God who loves us beyond measure? And do we say we place our faith in you as we pray? Now we go forward and we work towards that same result. A partnership, a covenant of faith. Maybe for you it's time to move on in that covenant of faith. Happy to have a chat with you about that. Uh, if that's uh, something you want to do, just get in touch with me. But also do check out that, that longer reflection on faith and covenant faith on the website. But for now, uh, we turn in our, uh, to our creed, creed, our demonstration of what we believe. And, uh, again, this has been said through centuries in one form or another um, by other Christians who have gone before us. And so we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Even uh, reading our creed together, I just reflected as we were reading there, even in there you read the partnership of God's work on earth, don't you? And we're going to come to that time of our prayers. And Emily is going to come and lead us in prayer now as we come before God with our intercessions. Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray. We pray for the witness of the Church this week, particularly in places where Christian faith is ignored and forgotten. We pray for those who carry major responsibilities as bishop and church leaders, and are always expected to know what to say and do, whatever the situation. Give them compassion, wisdom, and the mind of Christ. Strengthen Christopher, our bishop, and Max, our rector, and all your church in the service of Christ. That those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal the glory in your world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Christians working in place of power or influence who make decisions which may affect many people. We pray for Christians in politics, the media, advertising and the financial markets, that they may know how to act and what to say in order to be true to Christ. We pray too that we may examine your own powers above others, at work or at home, and use it responsibly 
by offering it to the one who laid aside his power and took the form of servant. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all those in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those whom we love, the special people you have given to us, wherever they may be. We pray for our friends, the close ones, and those that we sometimes forget. Those with a special problem and those who need you. We pray for each of them and what they give to us. Keep us faithful to them as you are faith faithful to us. Give grace to us, our family and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those for whom this day will seem long and hard, for those in hospital or ill at home, especially as a result of COVID those struggling with despair or depression, those waiting for a job or important news, or for a friend to call. We particularly pray for those for whom this day will be their last. We name them in the hearts of any people we know in special need. Today we particularly remember Denise and her family as they mourn the loss of David. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember with deep gratitude those who have left their mark on our lives by giving us love and laughter, but have now gone before us to be with Christ. We hold them in our hearts, knowing that you, Lord, hold them in yours. Hear us as you remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, according to your promises. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your, your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Thank you, Evelyn. We are the body of Christ in one spirit. We were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And as I prepare the communion table, why don't you take a moment to think about who you might be bringing after the service to share peace with. We'll be using our usual Eucharistic prayer, prayer B, again, is a, which is available to download on our website. As we come together around the communion table and in your homes, we remember that those around the world also join us. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
Father, we give you thanks and praise for through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son. Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance the same way after supper he took the cup and gave it thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread, share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And so, friends, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, 
our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. receive the body of Christ who died for us, for all of us. I receive the blood of Christ which was shed for us. I receive it for all of us. Just take a moment to uh, receive God's communion wherever we are, to know His Spirit is with us. And uh, we're remembering that Christ died for us. We say our prayer of thanks together as we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Died and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.